Everyone will have two minutes each. I want to remind everyone of our rules of civility, that we listen, that we do not applaud, nor do we boo or hiss or anything like that. If someone says something that you agree with, you are free to raise your hand and silently let us know that you agree. But we do ask that everyone be respectful of all the speakers, regardless of whether you agree or disagree with their statements. Uh, we're lucky enough to begin tonight with Council Member Bill Rosendahl from the Los Angeles. You got a hand. You got a vote back there. How many oh, folks, folks. <laughs> from L.A.? Bless you. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the city attorney. Um, we did have the collaborative meeting uh, that we all talked about uh, at the meeting on March 2nd. It was to meet with our city attorneys and your city attorneys and the guy who runs the airport and a couple of other people. Uh, and I met with the city manager. Uh, we had a wonderful meeting as well. Uh, and I really feel there's a collaborative effort that can be developed tonight. I thought uh, my colleague Kevin McEwen's comment about directing the city attorney's office to explore, can we close it in 2015? Not the legal implications of lawsuits, but the direction as policymakers uh, to the city attorney and to the city manager, can we close that in 2015? And if we can, what would we like there instead? That allows a true dialogue. My city will work closely with your city on that option if the city attorney is given your direction to do it. We're already geared up uh, to do that. Many of you know my position is very clear on this. I don't believe this airport should exist after 2015. And I will do everything I can within my powers as a person who represents 285,000 people that embrace the city of Santa Monica. But at the moment, we know that most takeoffs go over us, most landings go over us, and all that toxicity goes in my folks' lungs. We had a wonderful meeting with Ted Lieu. We had a statewide hearing on the toxicity issues, on the lead issues, uh, on the potential safety issues, the noise issues, and all of them together do suggest that this airport, maybe 90 years ago, green fields and orange groves made a lot of sense, but now the most dense urban environment on the West Coast, this airport no longer belongs there for the safety and the health of the residents in Santa Monica and the residents in the city of Los Angeles. So uh, I appreciate, colleague, you putting that motion forward, and I would look forward to what do we do and how do we shut it down? And then in 2015, what do we do with it afterwards? And one last comment about the FAA. Folks, they're your pit bulls of the policy makers in Washington. Like building and safety is for me on my laws and rules. If Henry Waxman, now representing the Venetians and also the Santa Monicans and my folks in the Palisades and in Brentwood and in West LA all realize that our great a uh, congressman who is extremely important and powerful in Washington has the ability to walk to the FAA and say we're going to shut it down and we're going to shut it down now, it gets the vote of the Congress, the President endorses it, and it's over. So the, the goal is to give Henry the tools that he can work with. And the tools are the collaborative effort between the city of Santa Monica and the city of Los Angeles to give him the ability to sit down and talk about ways in which we can, can close it. My, my dear friend Bob Holbrook and I go back many years uh, with this airport in my old television days. And some of the others I've gotten to know, you got a lot of new faces around the horseshoe, what we call the horseshoe in, in our city. But thank you for letting me speak. God bless you all. Let's work together to shut it down in 2015. Thank, thank you. Good. Applause, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because we do it in our city as a courtesy to elect this one. Get the parking validated first. Get the first. Thank you for being back to once again iterate your willingness to collaborate with us. I think that's what it's going to take. I'm glad you talked about the legislative option with Representative Waxman, because that's part two. Um, I think we have to understand this is a partnership that's going to take years to see fruition. Uh, we, we can't begin to take action now on something that will happen in 2015, but we can be prepared. What we have decided we can do, though, is relieve some of the impacts that your folks are feeling. Uh, I, I get emails from your constituents as much as I do from mine. And they talk about the flight schools and the circular path that goes south over Venice and back, and they land and take off and go back over Venice.
us again so so this is something where you could help us in the short term because our staff has told us they have worked out a plan with the flight schools to move many of those flights away from Santa Monica Airport to some other airport but to do that in the short term until 2015 we're going to have to subsidize that now we could use your support in doing that can you help us with subsidizing the flight schools to move to Camarillo or Torrance or wherever to get them out of the airspace over Venice that's something we can do in the short term well first of all I must say that it's intriguing thought subsidy we'll see what they're talking about uh, we could sit in the room with them hear them out but I want to get rid of those flight schools when I saw that dead pilot there in my Penmore golf course uh, uh, I, I can tell you that poor guy died at 62 and he was a, an experienced uh, pilot uh, but he could have killed people golfing or gone a little further and got into the homes of my, my residents you know you know this I used to live under the flight pattern on Dimmick and it just drove me nuts and when uh, uh, the Reverend James Kahn uh, was the mayor, a dear friend from my television days. I told him that the blood is on your hands uh, when people get killed either by accident, when it lands in a home, or some other way. So I've been committed to wanting to get rid of those flight schools, get rid of those props and those jets uh, for a long, long time. And that's I'd be happy to sit with you and work out if we can. You get that's why I'm suggesting in the, in the short term, Sure. I'd be able to be able to get those planes. I would be delighted to have a conversation with you on that yep. and our staffs in the city and your city. I look forward to sure. a productive. That'd be great. That'd be great. Council Member Schreiber. I just wanted to sort of follow up on that a little bit. Good evening, and say that to, to the extent the city of, of Los Angeles is willing to spend some money, I mean that's really all kidding aside. What Council Member McEwen is question goes to a little bit is whether they spend some money to relocate the flight schools or spend some money, for example, on putting your lobbyist alongside the city of Santa Monica's lobbyist to work on this with Congressman Waxman and uh, 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 matters like that. I think that would be really helpful if the city would come to the table with those kinds of assets. Well, we certainly will um, with, with our lobbying efforts. We have a, a lobbying staff in Washington. I, I, that's why I'm saying yours is much larger than ours. To work with yours. Much larger than ours. Of course. Right. So if they could be directed by the, can the Los Angeles City Council to work on this matter as a priority, that's as a sort of putting money that. behind efforts. I'm not uh, saying and money yet. You know, I'm getting rid of employees. We got a two point. Uh, we all have those same kinds of issues. Not as but, much as so, you. So, so, but, but I'm just saying that to the extent you have assets that can be deployed on this, we will welcome there because we've been doing this yeah. you know, in our own way. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Council Member Rosendahl. We appreciate your coming out tonight. Thank you all for letting me speak. To no applause. Wave your hands. David Goddard, who is speaking on behalf of the Airport Commission, and he will have five minutes. Mayor, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, Platon Davis, Council Members, Rod Marshall, Community Members. Um, I'm very uh, thankful to hear the positive comments about uh, exploration of legal strategies and things that are going to be on behind the scenes with the City Council and with the City of uh, Los Angeles. I'm here tonight to talk on a more tactical level to implement some policies uh, at the airport in order to make the airport a little more um, city friendly and a little less user friendly uh, to protect the city from its uh, you know, potential liabilities in operating it. The first slide here is uh, a summary of three community surveys that were done. One was the response cards from the uh, city visioning workshop. One was the CASMAT survey, and the final was the Ocean Park Association survey. And all of them had uh, requests to close or reduce operations of the airport that exceeded 80% of the participants. And so the question is, why does the community feel this way? If we look at the aviation community behavior over the past many years, they operate the airport with no runway safety areas. We, we live with the exhaust danger. We live with pattern flying. We live with flight schools over densely populated areas. And we live with aircraft maintenance testing over densely populated areas. And very late, uh, very early morning landings and very late night takeoffs. And the community doesn't find this behavior reasonable. So you know, we ask, what can we do as a community to affect this behavior? 
Marcia briefly touched on this council resolution that was done in 1981, which is 6296, which is the policy of the city of Santa Monica to affect the closure of the Santa Monica Municipal Airport as soon as possible. This policy is consistent with what the community wants per the surveys that were previously cited. Okay, this is a very important point here that I want to slow down a little bit on and consider. Under the Federal Aviation Act, municipal airport proprietors have a power to regulate airport operations to reduce the city's exposure to liability for nuisance and to enhance the community's human environment. This proprietor power was recognized in the 1984 Santa Monica Airport Agreement and in two major post-ANCA cases. And for those of you that don't know, ANCA is the Airport Noise and Capacity Act of 1990 that basically prohibited or prohibited cities from enacting noise ordinances that conflicted with the federal ordinances. 